Okay. Hi, Kit here, another beginner's class. The only prop you'll need today is something to put underneath one hip when we go to do our quad stretches. I've got a meditation cushion, but any firm cushion will do the job. I'm going to begin with one of my favorite exercises, and that's all the different things that can be done in the lunge position. Now I'm going to keep facing the same side towards you so that you can see the position of both legs as I change them over. The start position is very simple. Uh, you should also note that this floor is extremely well padded and it's completely comfortable not to have anything between my knee and the surface. But if you need something, by all means, go and get that now. I have both hands on the inside of my front leg like this and I move the back leg back by coming up on the ball of my foot and using that little leg straightening action to slide that back leg back as far as I can get it. Then I think about bringing the back hip forward and this front hip back like this and this squares up the hips and then I think very, very gently pull myself forward like this. Now the only place that I'm feeling that now is the top of the back leg and also a tiny amount of tension on the inside of the front thigh too. And in fact, in this position, those two tensions are balancing each other. We need to have both of them. Then I'm going to roll slightly to the outside of the back leg like this. I'll just do that a bit quicker so to exaggerate it like this because now when I pull myself forward, that stretches a slightly different place at the top of the back leg. And if I come back to the middle and go to the inside like this, you'll see that my foot's pointing out slightly now. That changes it again. And for me, in fact, today, that's the tightest line. And the goal in our work always is to find the tightest line and to loosen it. So that's one. I won't do any contractions this first time through. We're just having a little feel of what everything feels like today. And now this is what it looks like when you're looking at the other leg. To get into the stretch position, I come up on the ball of the back foot, use little leg straightening actions like this. Make sure you haven't got any material pinching you, as I was just then. Let the foot go flat again, move around a little bit, bring the back hip forward like this and the front hip back. That squares you up and that will give you a stretch in the center of the top of the back leg. I take a breath in and on a breath out pull myself forward like this to get that first initial little stretch. And I can feel everything going soft. Okay, I'll push myself back out of that and when you push back use your hands to do that. We'll go back to the first side and we'll add a couple of little things. The first thing I'm going to add is I'm going to put this hand on the outside of this leg here and then we're going to use little leg straightening actions like this, just a little bit of limbering for that front leg's hamstring. I'm feeling that today right in here and if I square my hips up like this as we did when we were stretching the hip flexors, that makes it more in the outer hamstring which is everyone's tightest hamstring. So I'm just going to go backwards and forwards and when I come to the end position and this is today's end position I'm doing little micro movements or pulses like this just to feel what is to be felt today. I'm not forcing anything, I'm using a very gentle leg straightening action. Uh, it feels very nice in fact. Okay now back to the back leg. Square the hips back up again. This time I'm going to try bringing the back foot up like this. Now if you find that you can't easily grab your foot and when you're watching this the first time through perhaps that's the reaction that you'll find inside yourself then get a loop or a strap or something and hold that instead. But here's what I'm doing now. I'm just moving myself around. Oh, that's lovely. When you fold the back leg up and then take both hips forward as I'm doing now, instead of feeling it at the top of the thigh, you feel it in the middle of the thigh for the most part. I'm going to wriggle around again, again experimenting with those different lines. That's the tight one today. 
And now I'm going to introduce two little contractions done very gently today. I'm going to try to slide the knee of that folded back leg towards this foot. So I'm pulling the knee along the floor, but it's not moving because friction is holding it in place. Three, two, one, stop. And then I'm going to try and straighten that back leg. So it's a full quadricep effort. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Let the leg go. Take a breath in, square the hips up, and watch this. On a breath out, all this extra movement is possible. Ah, that's, a, that's quite a wonderful sensation. I'm wriggling around a bit again to find that tighter line, and that's still on the inside. But you can see how much further forward and down the hips have gone just after doing those two contractions. Now we'll go back to the front leg. And to move that back leg back a bit to get a bit of tension in here. So basically you can see that as I'm doing this, the front leg's knee angle is opening. And I'll keep doing that until I get into a stretch position, which is about there. And again, I let everything go soft. Now there are two contractions I can do here too. The first contraction is I'm pressing the heel straight down onto the floor. I can feel that I'm using this part of my leg to do that. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. The next contraction is I'm going to try and pull the heel back to my bottom as though I was hooking the leg like this. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Take a breath in and watch slowly let the front leg go a little bit straight at the knee. Now, in this position, I've got a strong hip flexor stretch on the back leg, as well as a decent hamstring stretch on the front leg. And we do want to feel those two tensions because if you don't have the hip flexor tension on the back leg, you're back all round. And if you look at mine, it's perfectly straight. And similarly, if you're stretching the hip flexors and we didn't have the hamstring tension, your back would bend backwards. So we're balancing these against each other. And what I'm doing now, I'm just letting everything go soft and I'm unweighting my hands as though I'm trying to lift them off the ground, but I'm not taking all the weight off. And that increases the stretch and that's about my limit now. And I'll just stay here for a moment, trying to let everything go soft. I check my tummy, I'll let my tummy go completely soft. Oh, that's a lovely, lovely feeling. And to come out, I'm just going to lean onto this hand here and change my legs over and we'll go through that sequence on the other side. I've got this hand on the other side of the leg, as you can see. I'm bringing the back leg's hip forward and incidentally that means bringing the front hip back. They are joined to each other after all. We can't move one without that happening with the other. And now I don't remember which of the sequences I did first and it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do the leg straightening one first. Oh, yes. You get to this end point here, that's where I feel that tension starting to come on really strongly. And on this leg, it's actually in the middle of the hamstring. And again, I let my tummy go soft. And if you're fortunate, you'll find that you'll be able to straighten their leg a little bit more like this. Okay. A little hip flexor stretch now. Then I'm going to push this my both hips back like this, reach down and hold this leg, ah yes, and maybe bring this foot back a little bit, I'll explain why in a moment, I'm trying to improve my leverage so that I can pull the hips forward using the hamstring on the front leg because I've only got one arm to lean on now, 
pull forward. Let the tummy go soft. Try turning on the back leg's knee like this to find where the tightest line is and it's right there. And then we're going to do two contractions. I'm going to try to slide the back leg's knee along the floor towards my front foot. So I'm pulling it as though I'm pulling it to my chest. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Do nothing. Let everything relax again and then try to straighten the back leg. I'm pushing the foot that I'm holding away from me quite firmly. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Let the leg go down to the ground. I've got my chest on this thigh here. Oh, that's just such a beautiful sensation. The release at the top of the back leg is just profound. So I'm going to stay here for a moment and simply experience that sensation. The more often you can experience the sensation of the body letting go like that, the more easy it is to recapture that the next time you're stretching, even if you're not feeling particularly loose that day. The body literally learns how to relax while it's under tension and that is a great gift to give to yourself. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, now I'm creeping this foot forward to put a little bit of tension in it. That's it. Squaring my hips up. I might go a little bit further. That's it. I've got tension in both sets of muscles now. And I'm going to pull the front foot back to me. Five, four, three, two, one. It doesn't matter which order you do these contractions in. And then I'm going to press the whole leg down into the floor. Five, four, Two, one, stop. Let the tummy go soft. Bend your arms a bit so the chest stays in contact with the thigh. Move your back leg back a bit more. Open up the front leg's knee angle like so. And as soon as you feel sufficient tension, hold yourself there and watch. I'm going to unweight my hands slightly to increase that sense of being stretched. Gravity is doing everything for me here. Oh, that's lovely. Let everything go soft. Wriggle around a bit to try and find a tighter line if you can. And then come out. Oh. That is sensational. Um, imagine being paid to do what you love. Okay, so I've got a couple little things here. I'm going to begin at the beginning because this is the beginner's class after all. When we want to stretch this quadricep, we want to fold this leg underneath us, but there's a little thing that one has to do and it's important. I don't know whether we'll be able to see it all that clearly on the cameras, but I'm folding my leg like this and notice I've unweighted this muscle line completely by rolling over onto my right hip. And watch, I grab the calf muscle and I literally twist it out of the way. You can probably see now that a good a third of the bulk of the calf muscle is outside the line of the leg and that's what you want. And the reason is, if these muscles are not soft and your hamstrings are bulky, then the effect on the knee is to pull the knee apart like this. And a lot of people when they first try to stretch their quads will report that they feel a sensation in the knee. It's just like a nutcracker. You know, when you press the handles of a nutcracker, if this doesn't get out of the way, then the knee is going to experience some force this way. But you can avoid that completely. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we're going to try to put this hip down on the ground inside the line of the heel here. But notice that my hips are at a little angle like this. Watch what this does. If I bring this cushion underneath this hip, now watch, the hips are perfectly level and the sensation in the body is it was on this line, the stretch was on this line, now the stretch is over the whole of the quadricep and that's another reason why we want to have the top of the leg facing the ceiling rather than like this as it was. So then, 
The first way to bring on more stretch, of course, is to lie backwards, but I don't want to do that, and I'll, I'll go into the reasons why in a second. So and the reason I want to do it, actually, I'll, I'll explain it now, is I want to use contractions of the glute muscle here to actually bring the stretch on. So just watch what this looks like. Oh, I just tucked my tail underneath, like pushing the hips forward with the glutes, and that increased that stretch considerably. And then I bring on just enough stretch by leaning myself backwards like this while still tucking the tail. And that's got quite a strong sensation in that quad today. I've been working on single leg squats, so I expect it to be a bit sore today than usual. OK, so the contractions here, again, there are two. I put this leg on top of this leg like this, and I lift this folded leg away from the floor while holding it down with that top leg. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. And then I try to straighten this leg. You can probably see the muscles moving under the trousers there. I'm pressing the instep as hard as I can into the floor. Two, one, stop. Bring on the stretch using that glute. And I'll show you just one more, more advanced technique by pulling the cushion out and leaning my weight, watch, onto this hip. That increases the stretch a bit further. And then if I hold this leg like this, go onto my elbows and watch the shape of my back here, bring this knee back to my chest, that brings on a big stretch in the quadriceps. So somewhere between those two or three techniques, you'll find the right intensity for you today. Oh, so I can feel everything letting go. To come out, put this foot on the ground, roll away like this. Oh. And again, I'll keep this side to camera so that you can see what it looks like from the other side. To get into the start position, I roll. I fold this leg, I grab the calf muscle and I slide the calf muscle sideways out to my side, away, bring the heel in a bit more, see what that feels like and I can see that I've got the same little slope in my hip as I had on the other side, so I lift up like this, ah, completely comfortable, then lean back. Every time you're working with your body, check regularly to see whether your tummy is completely, completely soft when you're in the re relaxation phase of any exercise. That is critical. What's happening? Hold on. Hmm? It's okay. Okay. I'll cut that bit out. Just make a note of approximately what the time is on the clock. 19 minutes. Thank you. Beautiful. So I'm letting everything go soft and you can't see me doing this but I'm actually leaning my weight. I'll exaggerate it if I come out of the stretch slightly. I'm rotating the body like this to increase the stretch. And notice also if this is the top of my thigh pointing up roughly in this direction, when I lean weight on this hip, the hip of the folded leg, can you see it rolls the leg to the outside? And make, that means the top or the front of the leg is actually facing the greatest stretch now. And always, especially with big muscle groups like quadriceps, always get used to the position you're in before you even think about doing a contraction. And that means you need to stay in that position for a good, realistically, at least a minute and perhaps even two. If you've got the time, spend longer in it. Then bring this leg over to here, like so. And now we can do the first contraction. I'm lifting the folded leg away from the floor and holding it down with my left leg very strongly. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Take the leg off, put a bit more weight on the folded leg, and then I'm going to try and straighten that leg. Five, four, three, two, one. 
stop. Let the tummy go completely soft. And using the glute on my right leg, tuck the tail under, lean back a bit further, and keep the weight on that folded leg's hip. That increases the stretch beautifully. And for many of you, that will be quite sufficient. But if you want a slightly more intense version, then as before, slide the meditation cushion out of the way, hold onto your knee like this, go down onto one elbow. Oh, that's strong today in the instep. And as you bring this knee back, it simply rolls the pelvis back, and that increases the stretching quadricep hugely. And I'll just rest, let everything go soft. Oh, and that's lovely. And to come out, roll away from the leg and straighten both legs. Oh, that's lovely. If you need a little break in between doing exercises, just take it, press pause and take a little break. Next, we're going to do a kneeling side bend. As you can probably see, it's a bit hot in the, in the set today. Now, I want to turn side on and show you what I'm doing with my hips in this position. What I'm doing is I'm tucking my tail very slightly like this. Can you all see that? Tuck. And we hold the tuck on while we lean to the side. And the reason is, when you tuck your tail, and I'll also add a little chest lifting cue and also probably bring the neck back, that artificially straightens the spine as we see it from the side. And if we do our side bending with a straight spine, even if it is an artificial thing, what happens is the demand of the side bend is distributed over many more of the vertebra than would otherwise be the case. So let's see. Tuck. Lift, head back. I've got my hand in position on the side of my waist here so that I can lean my body to the side like this. Also, just watch what I'm doing with this shoulder. I'll move it forwards a bit, backwards a bit, and I'm trying to find, again as always, the tightest line. It won't just be necessarily straight to the side, although it is for me today. And I bring the head back again, and if you look here closely, you can see that my neck is getting a beautiful stretch as well. Still tucking the tail, still lifting the chest, still holding the head back gently. This arm is doing nothing for the moment. And then bring this arm across the front of the body like so. Roll the shoulder back, and this is the beautiful thing, reach this arm out to the side. And as soon as you reach the arm out to the side, you'll feel this massive additional stretch here as latissimus dorsi is being stretched by your trapezius muscles. And then watch, let the head go further to the side, reach out a bit further, reach out a bit further, lean further to the side. And as soon as you get to your limit, Retuck the tail and try to let the muscles which you're feeling that sensation in go as loose as you can. Remember, we're deliberately creating tension here in the body because, of course, these muscles are holding us up as well. But if you watch, every breath takes me closer to the floor. And to come out of it, roll the top shoulder forward like this, very slowly. Keep reaching while you do, and you'll find that, sen that the sensation will go from the side of your waist more into your lumbar spine as you do that. Once the arm is completely relaxed and down, then lift yourself back out. And then the other side. So tuck, lift, head back, hand in position. On the top, I've got mine just over the top of the iliac crest. 
this arm is hanging free and I slowly a little detail I didn't mention before you can let the hips go to the side as you do this or you can hold them centrally as I am all that does is change where the maximum stretch will be felt so of course in time you should explore all these positions oh particularly this is lovely in my neck today on this side Notice I, as I breathe in, the, the side bend straightens slightly. I'll just do that again. Watch this. But as I breathe out, you'll be able to go further too. So use that action of the breath. Breathing in almost always straightens the trunk and breathing out lets it go where you want it to go. And then... Bring the arm up to above your head and then watch, reach the arm out. We're using these muscles, trapezius, to stretch the muscles under the arms. And of course, it adds the weight of the arms too. So watch, you find yourself simply, slowly going further. I'm bringing the top shoulder forward. I'm reaching out again, new stretch. Top shoulder forward, reaching out again, new stretch. Until here, there's nothing, and come back. And normally we do this standing up, but we can just as easily do it in this position here. And if you found that one side was much tighter than the other, by all means, briefly go back, stretch it again. Oh, lovely. There's a much stronger version available. We call this the side saddle position. I'm sitting on top of my heels at the moment, but just watch. Now, I'm off my heels. Only this hip is on the ground, and this hip is lifted up, as you can see. Bring my shoulders forward. I lean to the side, like this. And you can hold this leg too, if you, if you want to, and I might do that in a moment. Then reach this arm up and reach out like this. It's a much stronger stretch in the very bottom part. I might hold this leg in fact today. Oh, that's huge. Reach up to the ceiling, let the head go to the side. Oh, that's beautiful. And watch again the hip position. On top of my feet, off my feet, oh yes that's lovely. Now if you're not quite as flexible as I am, you can still push yourself to the side like this with your hands, with this hand, this other one that we were reaching up with before on the other side, and still get a really good stretch. In fact, by moving backwards and forwards, here I can feel some of the lumbar spine effects of those single leg squats I've been doing. So I'll reach this hand over to here, no here, reach this arm straight up to the sky and then go backwards and forwards a little bit to try and find again the tightest line which today is just here. Lovely. And again, because it's a side bending exercise, we'll do a little recovery rotation like this. The first movement I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this while facing the same way. So I have my left arm out one time, the right arm out the other time, and you'll be able to see that way how I'm using both hands to wind on the stretch. And I should also mention, whilst the exercise that we're going to do formally looks like this when we show it in the books and when we teach it in class, you might find that your shoulders simply aren't loose enough to get into that position, the start position. So don't force anything ever. It is perfectly legitimate to do this exercise with the arm like this, 
by all means put your shoulder on the wall if you can, but you might not be able to. And this hand here, I'm simply pushing this shoulder back away from the wall, changing my feet position so I can load up that chest and shoulder and arm a little bit more. And doing the exercise like that is perfectly fine. But I'm going to do it in the most difficult position, which is about 45 degrees, and it looks like this. Watch what I'm doing with my hips. I am actually turning myself into the stretch. So this shoulder is now behind my spine. I then lean into the wall like this. That loads up the pectoral part of the stretch, and then I'm going to use this hand to simply apply a small pushing pressure away from the wall. And then I lean my whole body onto that arm, the arm that's outstretched, I mean. And I breathe into the inside of my shoulder here at the front while I do that. And you can probably see that just by breathing, I'm going closer and closer into the wall. And on that note, if you can't get your shoulder in contact with the wall, by all means use a small yoga block or something similar between the wall and your shoulder, if that makes it feel more comfortable. I've done this so many times, it doesn't matter now. Okay, and in this position we can apply a contraction. The contraction here is simple. This hand, the up hand, I simply press into the wall while keeping the arm completely straight. Three, two, one one stop. Notice it's only a few seconds rather than the longer contractions we were using for the big leg muscles. I breathe in, I breathe out and let my tummy go soft. I breathe in again and I have two choices. I can either lean more into the wall like this or, and I can add to this, I can simply press my right shoulder a bit further away from the wall, lift my chest up, straighten my back, bring my head and neck back a little bit as well and try and let everything go as soft as possible. And I'm breathing into the top left hand side of my rib cage because every breath that I take in increases the stretch slightly. Conversely, when I breath out, breathe out, I should say, the stretch decreases slightly. So this is a natural sinusoidal rhythm the body has. We may as well work with it. Now I'm pressing myself away from the wall, turning into the stretching arm like this, put it down, wiggle it around a bit because it always is left feeling a little bit sore, lift the arm up and that's completely back to normal now. And I'll show you what that looks like on the other side. Face away from you again, lift the arm up. Remember if you can't get to 45, don't worry about that. I turn my body away from the wall. I'm using my hips to torque up the whole, can you see the wrinkles in my t-shirt show the degree of twist in my torso? Then lean into the wall and use this hand, oh, that's strong today, to press this shoulder away from the wall slightly. And then once again, make your posture a little bit more erect. And the reason in this instance for doing that is as soon as you lift your chest slightly, you'll feel an additional stretch in this side happening. And then when you breathe into this, and I'll do this now and see if you can see the, the chest move. Just increasing the diameter of the rib cage in this position significantly strengthens the stretch. So that was three deep breaths in and out. Next, I'm going to press my outstretched upper arm into the wall, and you'll feel very clearly that that's a, a big chest muscle press action. Three, two, one, stop. Let your tummy go completely soft. Take a breath in, and as I said before, you've got two ways of bringing on the stretch. You can simply lean the whole body against the wall, which actually feels very relaxing to do. Lift your chest up and you can add pressing the shoulder a little bit further away from the wall. And once again, breathe into this area. Oh, that's beautiful. Slowly come out, 
let your arm come down, give it a bit of a wriggle around because when you stretch something strongly, and that was strong, you'll always be left with a little bit of residual tension in those muscles. But if you move the arm around a bit, it just goes away. Now the same position, exactly the same position in all respects, can be used to stretch not the pectoral muscles this time, but the bicep muscles and also some forearm muscles too if we add a little something else. So I'll face away from me once more, do my left arm again, reach the arm up, turn the arm over. And when I turn the arm over, please watch here I'm doing it in the full shoulder. I'm not just turning my wrists over, that's really important. So I internally rotate the arm as far as possible, put the back of the wrist on the wall like this, wriggle my hips around to talk up the entire body, and then lean into the wall like this. And if you get this right, the only place you'll feel that will be in the biceps and perhaps in the elbow. Now the contractions are the same, but I'm, I'm going to stay here for a moment just to let everything relax. And I'm breathing into that same top left quadrant. Each time you stretch the left arm, you breathe into the top left hand side. And when you stretch the right arm, right arm you do the opposite. Lift your chest up, will make it a bit stronger. Bring the head back will relax your neck and I've been in that position now for about 45 seconds and so I'm going to straighten my arm fully and press the back of my wrist into the wall. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Breathe in, let the tummy go soft. Breathe in again and lean your body into the wall and or use the other arm to press the shoulder away from the wall. And I've got my hips in such a position that the rotational torque of their position in relation to my shoulders is also adding its own force. And I'm breathing deeply into the top left hand side of the chest. <sighs> to come out, let the shoulder come back, turn towards the stretching arm Bring the arm down and as before, move it around a bit, lift it up and that little residual ache will just disappear on the other side. Arm out to the side, turn the arm over fully, reach up to about 45 degrees. I'm moving the hips first. This leg came forward, this one goes back and that puts a twist in the waist. Lean into the wall. Use this hand to press. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Lift the chest up, bring the head back. Let everything go soft without moving. Breathe into this side of the chest. Now gently press the back of the wrist straight into the wall. You'll only feel that in the biceps if you get this right. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop using a longer contraction with my bicep muscles than the chest muscles because I've been doing a lot of chin-ups lately and my biceps are quite tight as a result. Take a breath in. Tummy goes soft. Take another breath in. Lean into the wall and press my this shoulder back away from the wall. Move the feet to increase the torque. Lift the chest, head back. Breathe deeply into this shoulder. Oh, wonderful. Now, something else to note. Did you see how slowly I came out of that position? Now, I've done this exercise a thousand times or more probably, but you, you as a beginner and me as a non-beginner, you don't know what it's going to feel like when you come out of a stretch. So if you just casually pop out of a stretch, you might even hurt yourself. You don't want that. If you come out of the stretch slowly with every degree of your awareness in the muscles that you're stretching, you simply can't hurt yourself. If you get to a place where it feels problematic, not that you're likely to, but I'm just using this as a general example, you can simply stop. You can move another way and you can avoid that discomfort. And in my opinion, you should do that.
one last exercise. How could I forget the cat pose? I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm betraying my people. Um, this is an exercise which a lot of people have found absolutely fantastic. It, it looks like a backward bend, and it is a little bit of a backward bend. But most importantly by far is it stretches the ribs and your abdominal muscles. Let me show you what it looks like. Firstly, reach your arms out like this. And I'm going to exaggerate this. I am pushing my arms off the body like I was doing a handstand. The point that I'm trying to make here is that the, if you go into this exercise like this with your shoulder girdle relaxed, a lot of people can feel really, really uncomfortable compression in the shoulder joint itself. But on the other hand, if you reach your arms up like this, as I'm doing in this position, and then you back yourself down like this, can you see the arms and shoulders are in a completely different relationship with the trunk and everything feels completely comfortable in the shoulders? You can also make it a bit more intense by looking up in between your hands. Now watch. I press the arms straight. I press them off the body even more firmly. I take a breath in and I simply lean into the wall. Now you can bend your knees a little bit if you like. I found that that made it feel a bit more comfortable for me. Breathe. And now there's a contraction you can do here as well. But don't let your arms bend. I'm going to re-straighten mine. The contraction is that I'm simply pressing my hands into the wall and pulling them down at the same time. Three, two, one, stop. Take a breath in, press the arms straight. Oh, that feels marvelous. And while we're here, I've just thought of the perfect counter pose. We call this the three amigos. Watch this. Bend the knees, tuck the tail. Chin on chest, hands together like this. Breathe in and watch. Push your arms down the body while you keep the tail tuck on. Actually, for computer users, this is just marvellous. Now, what you don't want to do is lose the tail tuck and just keep reaching your hands down towards your knees here, that won't stretch anything. Tuck, hold the tuck on, chin, press the arm straight. Now watch, that is the exercise. And, still pushing. Still pushing, ah, fantastic. Okay. This is my favourite part of the program, the relaxation part. I'm going to do something slightly different today. Uh, so please lie down. Put something underneath the back of your knees if you need to do that. Wriggle around on the floor. Press pause if you have to go off and find something to put underneath your knees. And once you're back, press play again. The practice begins. Take in a deep breath, and as you breathe out, make a ah sound. Twice more in your own time. Breathe in. Ah. We are signaling to the body and the mind that we are doing relaxation practice. Breathe in. Ah. Can you feel, even though you might have only done this a few times before, but just making that sound first feels good and secondly, it relaxes you. That's the purpose of it. Now, lying on the floor, arms out to each side, just move really slowly and ask yourself, can I feel my left heel, right heel, left hip, maybe the back of the left knee on the bolster if you're using one behind your knees, right hip, left shoulder and arm, right shoulder and arm, and my head resting on the floor. Feel the weight of your body touching the floor at the meeting points I just mentioned. 
left heel, right heel, left hip, right hip, left shoulder and arm, right shoulder and arm, the head. Tuck your tail very gently and see if the lower back will come a bit closer to the floor. And you might need to shift the back of your head along the floor a tiny bit by bringing your chin into your chest to lengthen the back of the neck. Take another deep breath in and then let the breath out and let yourself go as soft as possible. Now move your awareness to your right hand. Feel what the right hand feels like resting on the floor. Very slowly start to curl your fingers, the fingers of the right hand, in towards the palm. Do this so slowly you can feel the air going past your fingers. Feel the air passing your fingers. Start to bring the thumb towards the curling fingers. Keep slowly curling the fingers and at some point one finger will touch another and you might be able to feel the heat of your palm through your fingertips. Keep curling. Another finger touches. Keep curling. All fingers are touching now. Bring the thumb over, reach it out and then wrap it gently around the first and second fingers. Perhaps it's touching the third one as well. And feel what a very lightly clenched fist feels like. How the sensations have changed since you brought your fingers together. Feel the thumb against two or three fingers. Now, slowly increase the gripping force. Just slowly. There should be plenty left. Keep increasing the gripping force and feel how it might be the little finger that contracts the most strongly at first. And then you bring the ring finger and the middle finger and the index finger in a bit harder. You then bring the palm towards the fingertips, towards the nail side. You press the thumb onto those two fingers. Now take a breath in and really squeeze as hard as you can just for a second or two. Let the breath out, slowly straighten your fingers and then let the hand rest completely naturally and become aware that relaxing is identical with letting go. Letting go tension is relaxation. Feel what that feels like in your right hand. Feel the intense aliveness of the right hand and perhaps the forearm. Breathe in and as you breathe out feel everything going softer. Remind yourself in normal daily life you're going to let some tension in your body go out with each breath out. And become aware how good being relaxed feels. And understand that the stretching that you're doing is just one way of relaxing muscles in the body. And this practice is just a different way. And they complement each other beautifully. Now move your awareness to all the movements in the body we label as breathing. 
feel the air come in past your nostrils and perhaps you can feel it going down the back of your throat and you feel your tummy and chest lifting as you breathe in and that breath in comes to an end and quite naturally the breath out begins let the breath out notice that breathing out is effortless breathe in again and feel the tiny effort that takes and feel all the movements that are associated with it and once again that breath will come to its own end and you let it out without effort in your own time feel the sensations in the body that accompany each breath in and out Now I'm going to mention some parts of the body and ask yourself, if I say left hand thumb, is it easier for you to visualize it or feel it? One is not better than the other. Just choose the one that you're most closely connected to so the sensation or the image is strong left hand thumb index finger middle finger ring finger left little finger left forearm elbow upper arm the left hand side of the chest the left hand side of the abdomen, the left hip, thigh, knee, calf muscle, the left heel, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, left little toe. And now over to the other side. Right hand thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, right little finger. Forearm, elbow, upper arm, the whole of the right shoulder, the right hand side of the chest, abdomen, right hip, thigh, knee, calf muscle, right heel, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, right little toe. The front of your neck left hand side of the neck, right hand side of the neck, the 
your forehead, left eye resting in its eye socket, right eye. Nose, left cheek, right cheek, top lip, bottom lip, space between your teeth, This is the state of deep relaxation. You can achieve this anywhere and no matter what's happening around you. Hear the sounds in your environment and feel them passing through you, leaving no trace at all. They are simply sounds. They come and they go. They come and they go, leaving no trace. For a moment, do nothing at all. Simply enjoy this state of deep relaxation. And now it's time to come out of our state of deep relaxation into ordinary consciousness. Take a deep breath in to the top of your chest, reach your arms up to the ceiling and out behind you as you continue to breathe in. As you breathe out, bring the arms back to your side. Take your time, there's no hurry. Repeat that arm action two more times in your own time. When you're ready, roll over onto your side and sit up. The practice is over.